The mystery group calling themselves Leviathan has attacked the pillars of the DC Universe's espionage community, and now the heroes can't even trust each other. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of Event Leviathan issue number two and find out. Alrighty then, so as we join the comic, we're with Red Hood of all people. He's looking over the debris following the fight between Batgirl, Green Arrow, and the Leviathan creature from Free Comic Book Day. Which, if you had no idea what anyone was talking about here in this opening, that's why. Because like I said in the previous issue, event Leviathan has taken like three different stories to try and get started. Batman arrives on the scene and him and Jason wonder, hey, are we cool with each other? I don't know. I'm Brian Michael Bendis and I never read the Red Hood book. I just know that Red Hood is kind of sort of a villain now, maybe, but we're not going to talk about it, so don't worry. What we know for certain, though, is that Batman wants Jason's help in putting together a team of detectives to help uncover this Leviathan plot. Well, actually, it was Lois's idea and Batman is now pushing that idea off on Jason. And because Red Hood is is only just now joining this ongoing Leviathan story, Batman needs to stop to get him up to speed, which I swear is like half of this book right now, people getting other people up to speed on what Leviathan is and what they're doing. Batman and Red Hood wonder aloud to themselves why exactly Leviathan has been sparing as many people as they have, like General Sam Lane, who is currently being watched over by Vic Sage the Question. He was the head of Argus and one of the very first people attacked by Leviathan, yet no one has seemed to have made another attempt on his life until right now, but not with the monster and not with the red-faced leader of Leviathan, but with an actual costumed agent, something we haven't seen before. The Question does everything he can to fight the attacker off, but in in the end, Sam Lane ends up saving himself, never being too far from a gun. Vic even says that he really respects his work, which, ooh, actually flies in the face of everything you know about the question. But again, this is Brian Michael Bendis' version of the question, so what else is new? Turns out the costumed attacker was actually a former agent of Spiral, meaning that the Leviathan leader is seemingly able to turn the people he disappears over to his side eventually, perhaps through some manner of brainwashing. Batman opts to send Plastic Man to look over the corpse of the agent for evidence, and really why you would send a clown like Eel O'Brien to investigate something so important is beyond me, especially when the Flash exists in this universe, a guy who, oh, I don't know, is a detective and a crime scene tech. Plastic Man is met again by the mysterious leader of Leviathan, who I'm still calling Leviathan because this far in, he still doesn't have a name. Leviathan does seem to know a ton about Eel, though. Including, get this, every super team he's ever been on, including some of the super teams whose canonicity is up in the air at the moment post the DC Rebirth era. Once again, is this to imply that this Leviathan character remembers things about past crises that our mainline heroes don't, or is this just Bendis playing fast and loose with continuity again? Leviathan Guy then makes the same offer to Plastic Man that he's been making to literally everybody else in the superhero community. Join me on the dark side. Together we'll build a better world. This world is broken. Yada, yada, yada. Before eventually just disappearing appearing with the body, no one ever actually thinking to try and stop him in any meaningful way. Back with Jason Todd, he comes to the realization, wow, Batman, that's a pretty lame story you've been telling me. Sounds like you made absolutely no progress whatsoever and have no idea who your suspect should be for Leviathan Guy's identity, except for, oh no, wait, you're all here, wait, you think I'm Leviathan. What evidence do they have? Well, they got some pretty flimsy evidence. Um, Leviathan Guy fights real good, uh, we think, and, uh, we got some of his technology, which is a lot like Bat Family technology. Let's forget for a second that no one can seem to pinpoint Tim Drake's whereabouts right now, or the fact that Dick Grayson thinks he's a guy called Rick, so through the process of elimination, it must be Jason. The ironic thing is, as the comic winds down, I would absolutely love Jason Todd to become a big DC Universe villain again, but we certainly know that's not happening. And so that was Leviathan issue number two, everybody, and I gotta say, this many issues in, and I'm shocked that this series still hasn't started yet. Every issue, we keep seeming to get the same information. Leviathan is spooky. They're mysterious. They're gonna build a new world. They're recruiting heroes. For what purpose? I don't know. We're two of six in, and we still don't know. Also, I raise an eyebrow at this whole we need to recruit a team of detectives thing to solve this mystery, when in reality, I think it's we need to recruit
recruit a team of characters Bendis wanted to write about. Even if they don't gel and even if they don't have a real reason to show up in this story, case in point, Huntress is here and they make a joke about the fact that Jason doesn't know who Huntress is despite the fact that they've totally been together. In other books, is this a small continuity nitpick? Yes it is, but it's the kind of thing that makes me tear my hair out as a fan. Overall, I give this a 6 out of 10. The artwork continues to be a great saving grace. I'm just shocked how after so much build-up, so little is actually happening in Event Leviathan. Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cape Joel again. I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, why not take a look at some of these other videos I have available from the channel. Then you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at Cape Joel, so you're always up to date on what I'm doing next. And hey, if you're in the market for some cheap comic books, might I recommend Book Depositor? They're my favorite place to get cheap comic book trades, and if you use my link down in the description, not only will you save a bundle by not having to pay a cent for shipping, but everything you do buy goes to support me in the channel. So you win, I win, everybody wins, right? And until next time, everyone, this has been Cape Joel, and I'm going to continue making comic book videos that smack of greatness. Bye bye